Hello, and welcome to finally the futon update some of you have been waiting for. So I'm Sam, and almost about a year ago, we decided to change our bed to a floor bed. And this is gonna be a video about all the, the good things and the bad things, and the things we definitely learned along the way, and very recently, some things that were unexpected. I do have tatamis now, but they are not under the bed. And also, this mattress seems to be very high and firm, not like the one that I had in the previous video, which is correct, because this is actually our old mattress, like a standard foam mattress. And yes, it's on the floor still, but we recently had to change it to this, and I will explain why in a little bit. But this is not going to be a permanent solution. This is just a temporary thing that we had to kind of put back in while we go out and get our new mattress, which we're actually going to go out today and get a new futon. So that's what we're going to do. I would say one thing for some of you who are really curious and know what it's like to have your bed on the floor, as long as you have a mattress that's really easy to move, then you can kind of give it a go without the full commitment. But you do still have to lift your mattress up every day if you want to avoid the mistakes that we have learned with our futon. Very, very important. So I'll even just show you right now. Uh, yeah, so it's not the prettiest uh, because you just see the back of the mattress, but you do get a lot of floor space and yeah, you can kind of try it out if you're curious. But this is not the solution that we want to have permanently, so let's go get a new futon. So you're wondering what happened to our first futon. Well, we were using it up until a few months ago. When your bed is directly on the floor, airing it out is really important, which was easy enough to do from spring to fall. But as winter came, keeping the windows open for so long was impossible, so the mattress didn't get its regular refreshing time. Accompanied with the energy crisis this winter, a lot of us here in Vienna were cutting back on heating our apartments, which resulted in a lot of moisture buildup, meaning our mattress picked up mildew surprisingly fast. Moisture. I was really shocked and sad that it happened. I knew if I had turned the mattress more frequently and tried alternatives to raise it off the floor during the day, it could have been avoided. I also read recently that laminate floors like we have in our bedroom may be more prone to moisture buildup, but with the damage done and lessons learned, it's off to find a new futon. So it's actually going to be a few weeks for the mattress to arrive once we place an order. So I thought now would be a good time to talk about the tatami mats because this was something I talked about in the first video, but I didn't have them yet. So I don't know that much about tatamis. I mean, all of this stuff. I'm totally figuring this out as I go and kind of playing around and experimenting and researching and watching other YouTube videos. In general, tatamis are expensive, but these are definitely not the most expensive they can go. These are kind of like middle price range, I guess. So I think it's a pretty fair trade-off if you are planning to use this as like your bed frame, essentially. So one thing is to help with air circulation because you need something between the mattress and the floor to really give air between it. So this would really help with my previous mattress to avoid any mildew or reducing moisture and everything. You still need to air out your mattress and everything with this, but it definitely helps I have noticed that with the tatamis, it is so much warmer just to be able to set on here versus the floor, especially now that we're really into winter time now. 
So these tatamis are made from natural materials. Coming with it is also aromatic <laughs> essence to it essentially, which I was actually a little worried about if I would like it or not. The scent has definitely gotten a bit um, fainter as time has gone on with them, but it does always keep this kind of like hay smell, I guess is the best way to put it. Also, on the other hand, when you smell it, you know that it's getting to nighttime and resting and sleeping. So I think a lot of people have also this perspective. But yeah, the tatamis themselves are very soft. It has like a little bit of bounce to it. Not so much, but it really does make a difference compared to like a floor. It's a very inviting surface to just kind of sit and chill on. One thing I did get a lot in the comments was, yeah, but if you put tatamis in, you're going to lose all of your floor space again which yes, that is kind of true. I had in my mind the ability to move these tatamis over to the side, how they were before in like this kind of couch formation. So when I did need the space, I could easily just slide them over and move them. But you do need two people to more easily and more gently move them because I don't want to break them. You don't necessarily want to like slide these things around because it could damage the weaving that it has on it. So. Yeah, I am kind of still playing around with how to reimagine this space if these were here permanently all the time. It might have to be a thing that if I do really need the whole floor, then I need to kind of recruit some help to move some things around. Overall, because it has such a low profile, I kind of do things off to the sides that I normally wouldn't if I had like a really high bed frame. You know, it's not a ton of space, but it's something. But yes. So you can lose a bit of space if you put these in. Of course, there's alternatives to tatamis because you do have to be careful not to get water on them and you also have to vacuum them gently to clean them. So maybe you want something that's a bit more robust. Then you could also consider doing like a pallet bed. Maybe your mattress has to be a more firm one in the sense where a futon maybe would sink too much in between. Yeah, it's definitely something that you could consider as well instead of going the tatami route. I'm very happy to have them and to try them. Like I said, I don't really know much outside of my small experiences with uh, tatamis in other settings. It's been a nice addition to the room in general. Okay, I guess we need a mattress now. <laughs> So we have a new mattress and it is definitely a bit heavier and thicker than our first one, which we did expect. The silver lining with the situation of our first mattress kind of going bad was that we could kind of select something new. 
So we chose to get one that is filled with cotton and also a natural, mostly natural latex because we did want something that was a little bit softer than the first futon we had, um, which was all sheep's wool, 100%. And I mean, I enjoyed it, but I also could understand that it was a bit harder than we were typically used to. This is kind of like a nice compromise so we can both enjoy it and we still have really the firmness of it, but it does have a little bit more coziness. I should mention that this mattress in particular is not meant to be like a Japanese mattress, rolling, storing kind of futon that you particularly see with like association with tatamis. I would be super interested in trying a Japanese futon that is much thinner and meant to go with the tatamis, but it's a bit hard to get a hold of here in Europe. And yeah, I think I need to still do some more research. We only slept on it one night so far, but it is so nice having this kind of futon back. You kind of have to get used to it again uh, because we have a few months without it. It's an easy adjustment back into it, I think, versus like the very first time we switched to it. I mean, it feels really nice. <laughs> and I really do enjoy the firmness of this mattress in particular, which is incredibly surprising because I was someone who always had a very soft bed and even like a bed with foam on top. And even going back to when I was a kid, I mean, I was a kid of the era of bubble couches made of plastic and a waterbed. So like, it is very surprising that this is something that I am gravitating towards. And I really enjoy being on the floor as well, which I would not have said probably five or 10 years ago, living in a bigger city. And I don't think I would have wanted to share the floor space with bugs and mice and things, you know? <laughs> Um, here, luckily, uh, I don't have that situation anymore, uh, and I also don't have as fast pace of a life anymore. De really dependent on where you are in life. One thing I think I've learned is your mattress and your sleeping positions that you prefer are definitely a factor to your comfort levels. For me, I do enjoy side sleeping. So if I actually want to fall asleep completely, side sleeping is really the only way I can do it. But I do enjoy when I first lay down to lay down completely flat without a pillow and just enjoy the stretching out, which is why the futon feels amazing when I first lay down. But once I really want to go to sleep, I still roll to my side and sleep on my side. At least for where I got my futon, it does say like a hard mattress, either thin or just all cotton would be best for if you like sleeping on your back. Uh, if you want something a bit softer, like we have some filling in ours, that's better for if you do still prefer sleeping on your side. I have to definitely play around with how this can work in the space now because I'm quickly losing space in here. That's one of the things of trying these new items is that they might fit in a different way than you had imagined. Now the space has like the Tommy's almost permanently here and now this futon is probably going to be more or less permanently here. You still have to flip it every once in a while but I might not be able to make the kind of couch shape I initially thought. Maybe it's something more like this that just is half in the room. It's going to be another experimenting phase definitely of how I use the mattress in, in the space. But I really love how this kind of grounds the whole thing. I felt like the other mattress before was just kind of floating in the space and I did get really spoiled of being able to pack this away and have the whole floor space open to myself. So I'll definitely have to adjust and see what I like best, but. So I guess it's about a good time to kind of summarize this whole part two. So kind of like as I ended the first video, I'm gonna do a little bit of pros and cons, but I'm gonna give it a different diagram because some of the pros and cons like play on each other and the way you view them may be good or may be bad. I think a lot of the things that I said in my very first video is pretty much still true in the sense that 
overall, I'm still really enjoying the sleep and the night routine and things that I have here. Although my night routine has definitely shortened, I am now just basically making the bed and we have a TV in here again. So it's kind of just back to a bit of a more normal night routine, you know, <laughs> watching a movie or something before going to bed. So it's not always a super romanticized night routine or morning routine for that matter, but it is definitely still an important part of my schedule and I do look forward to it as well. If you're wondering about the sleep overall, this specific mattress I am really enjoying. I think a lot more than the first one. It's definitely a bit softer than the first one and I definitely feel a lot more comfortable actually overall, which is nice to see the difference between the two. There's kind of something funny about the futons in general, for me at least, is that not every night is actually a great night of sleep. And that might sound kind of strange, but every morning is always a better morning than it ever had been with our previous mattress. I am sometimes a light sleeper if I'm like really have my mind going and I'm thinking of projects and stuff. Even if I only got a few hours of sleep, I woke up feeling more refreshed and more ready for the day and I didn't have any aches or pains or anything from my mattress. So even if I got less sleep, I was still feeling happier and better in the morning. That's been a really interesting thing to observe. So I still would definitely choose this even if it doesn't give me every night a guarantee super deep sleep. Cleaning is definitely one of those things that I'm going to add into the new diagram as in the middle because it does take more time and you actually have to be way more attentive especially because I have tatamis and things but it is also something I am enjoying as a part of my own self-care in some way. The attention to the space that means I'm taking care of myself as well and taking care of the things that are around me and that does really make me happy. If you don't have time to clean and if you don't really want to have to deal with that then I could understand this falling into a negative. But if you have the time and you want to make this part of your routine then it can definitely be a positive thing and I'm kind of taking it as a positive side that I spend so much time in this room doing work and getting caught up in work and caught up in my projects that it is really important that I clean up my projects at the end of the night and I wrap everything up and then it makes it into a really nice bed space again. So cleaning has been something that is more on the plus side for me. Now, the negative that I have to say with the cleaning side is the moisture and mildew possibility. I'm really worried that's gonna happen again and I'm doing my best to make sure it doesn't happen. Like if you had a standard bed and a standard mattress, you probably don't really have to worry so much about that. So that's definitely one thing that will probably always stay in the negative for me is that it is really a big possibility to happen. Okay, sticking with the negatives for a little bit, I have to say that this setup is not always the prettiest. Kind of like a half mattress folded up in the room all the time. The tatamis don't get to shine in their way when they're all alone. I mean, in a situation like this where it's not the bed fully made, it looks quite cozy and nice still, but it may be a little bit weird if you have friends coming by and they just see this in your room and be like, where is your room? Where is your bedroom? If you have guests that you want to stay in your place, and for us, we have a small apartment. So if I have guests come, sometimes I would transform my room into actually the guest room to make it more comfortable. And I would take the couch area. But in this case, not everyone could probably use this mattress and be comfortable with it. Really, you're making this space kind of for yourself and what works best just for you. I will say as a plus on the other side, I am someone who wants to do a lot more traveling and having a bed like this actually makes me feel more prepared. If I go to a place that doesn't have a most comfortable bed, I'm kind of gonna be okay with it because I have transitioned more so from a very soft, cushy bed to something that's much more firm. So if I go somewhere else, I will definitely still survive the night and that is kind of reassuring. So something maybe surprising that I'm gonna put in the middle is tiny apartment situation because it is definitely great having this set up for a tiny space because I can move things around with flexibility. But if you have any kind of structure going underneath your futon, it does reduce the flexibility a little bit more than I expected. I even considered maybe I can put the tatamis up on the wall during the day and the mattress off to the side when I do really need space. And that's something I think I could do on my own. But it's definitely not a thing that I would be doing every day as I used to do with my old mattress, just roll it up, stick it in the corner. 
and then I have like the whole floor space. But I also wouldn't necessarily change what I have going on right now because it feels much more like a bedroom and much more homey. But yeah, overall, I'm still super happy with having had this mattress and having made the decision to change my bed to a floor. I think for some people it may seem very strange, for some people it may seem like a no big deal that different types of beds are out there in the world, so it might not seem that strange. <laughs> um, overall, I'm very happy with it and I'm sure if you search this video, you are curious about doing it yourself. So definitely let me know if you decide to do this or if you're even just thinking about it. And thank you to everyone who left me comments in the previous video. It was really interesting hearing everyone's experiences and things you're trying out or things that worked or didn't work or how long you've been having a mattress on the floor. So thank you to everyone who's kind of commented and chatted with me on the last video. So I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. There really hasn't been a huge update, but hopefully I added some new information that might be helpful if you're considering it or yeah, just curious. Really happy to hopefully get out of this bedroom for the next videos that I make. My goal this year is actually to release one video per month, so if you want to stick around, please do. I'm hopefully going to be doing some interesting things out and about, not just in this room, which I'm very excited to film outdoors again. So if you feel like sticking around, be sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye!